I'd like to introduce Don Gray, who's um, going to come and talk to us about um, looking back and looking forward and the future of um, materials and architecture. Thanks a lot. Surface, highly polished, brilliant white limestone, must have looked fantastic. For over 3,800 years, the Great Pyramid of Giza was the tallest structure in the world. 2.3 million stone blocks, over one and a half tons each. Long time ago, though. Recent research suggests they may have been concrete. The temple at Kara Indesh, we're moving forward. 1500 BC, located at Uruk, southern Mesopotamia. Take a look at the construction here. There's a theme I'm going to pursue. You can see it clearly. They used what they had. And this, the great temple of Horus at Edfu, the best preserved cult temple in Egypt. These pylons, over 60 meters across, 30 meters high, sandstone bricks, stacked, battered, and carved. We're moving forward again, 1750. Cross wall construction round the edge of this fantastic square, the Piazza della Signoria. The Signoria, a group of nine men, randomly chosen from a hat from the guilds of the city to rule Florence for two months at a time, locked into the palazzo while they did. 20th century, Walter Gropi's first serious building, the Fagus Schulas factory. Iconic modern movement, heralding the arrival of the curtain wall. However, the construction is clearly brick. And this, John Utram's pumping station in the Isle of Dogs, brings us back rather neatly, I think, to Egypt and the Egyptians. He says he built a monumental temple he says it sits within a landscape of symbols. Perhaps. It's a lot of brick, but I can say that his website's well worth a visit. The Barrett Group completed 6,195 homes in the six months to December 31st last year. UK brick production fell from almost 3 billion per year in the first half of the 2000s to around half that in 2012. But I'm not anti-brick. It can be therapeutic, can be beautiful, but dependence on brick cannot come close to solving the housing shortage. The 2011 census shows housing requirements in the UK are on average 245,000 homes per year. And even if bricks were the answer, there's no possibility of the industry keeping up. Brick factories pollute. They kill agricultural activities. It's energy hungry. 35% of the production cost is energy. Emissions include sulfur dioxide, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride. But in the UK, housing building, house building levels remain at about 100,000 a year, well short of what we need. So what does the government do? Does it reform house building procurement? I don't think so. Instead, it changes the targets to an impossible 300,000 additional homes each year. New targets, not new thinking. And we've lost our ability to provide affordable social housing. Three boroughs in London are three of the 12 poorest boroughs in Western Europe. In the center of London, we have some of the best designers in the world here, and we should apply our hearts and minds to addressing the problem. So, what would you give me between these two? 150 years since the first serious diving suit. The one on the right can go deeper, for longer, more safely, with greater capability. Research and development into technology and materials. And what would you give me between these two, these two skiers? In 100 years, it's moved from a casual sport to a highly engineered experience. In this case, the experience is to exceed 250 miles an hour faster than free fall terminal velocity. And what would you give me between these two? In 100 years, cars have become cheaper, more economic, more affordable with each passing year. The electric car is nearly upon us. 
And how is all this possible while housing stands so very still, trapped in an assumed dependency on big brick construction? I don't need to voice over these figures. 2.5 billion on research and development in the car industry in the UK alone. The same for defense, not spending, research and development. And the office of the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister a paltry 29 million, you know, of which a small fraction is spelt, spent on new housing design. And what would you give me between these two? 45 years, but it's the one on the right that was proposed in 1968, and the one on the left is from the portfolio of Barrett Homes. It takes around 15,000 bricks to build a typical new house. I left Glasgow after graduating and to eventually work with Richard Rogers and Renzo Piano, and for me, at the time, it was difficult to believe that such interesting projects might actually be built. Well, they weren't, and they haven't been government architects, schools of architecture, we can do much better. There is a place for bricks. My favorite place for them is at the end of the 19th century. Although, to be honest, this slide of excellence in brickwork could have been Michael de Klerk in Amsterdam, uh, Alto, Maguire and Murray. I'm not anti-brick. But the rebuild of St Pancras took 60 million bricks. There's another place for bricks, of course, in a museum. In February 1976, a visitor threw blue liquid onto Andre's equivalent eight. It wasn't me, by the way. The current director of the National Portrait Gallery was sent to America to buy replacement bricks. He failed to track any down. Surface. A kinetic, wind-responsive wall wrapping the digital crit space of Kent School of Architecture. Contract period eight months, area 350 square meters, project value under one million. No bricks were harmed in the making of this building. Thank you.